stream it into their, into their lives uh, at will. Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering IBM Edge 2015, brought to you by IBM. Hi, everybody, we're back. Carla Wolf is here, and she is the Assistant Vice President of Performance Excellence at Elevation Credit Union. Carla, welcome to The Cube, it's great to see you. Thank you. So you just came off a keynote. Yes. Uh, we were doing live TV, so unfortunately I didn't, I didn't get to see you, but how was it? How did it, it feel? It was great, it was fantastic. We get to tell our story. We've won the National Malcolm Baldrige Quality Award um, in a six-year journey, and it's the nation's highest level award given for performance excellence, so I got to talk about it. So tell, tell, me, tell us a little bit about the credit union. What's the focus and? We're a community-based uh, banking organization, basically. Credit unions have members rather than customers, and it's affinity banking, so typically the origins of the organization are related to the community. In our case, it's uh, the University of Colorado. Oh, nice, okay, and you're, you're from Boulder. We were talking off, off camera, yeah. awesome place yes. in, in the United States. So what's your role? I mean, you, you're a process expert, so what does that all mean and where do you spend your time? Well, uh, a little bit of everything, but actually as we started our journey for performance excellence, we uh, devoted a group of people in our organization to in basically improving everything, but we made a really strategic decision in the beginning when we started this pursuit to sort of reinvent ourselves using business process. So. I, I'm overseeing the disciplines of knowledge management, business process management, as well as business analysis, so full plate. So how does the, what's, I mean, there's always, anytime you mess with technology, you better think about the business process. Exactly. Right? And frequently companies don't. So how do you interact with the IT organization? So the way our, our business process is structured at Elevations is we actually reinvented ourselves through the processes. So we built, which is not traditional, our entire organization, all the neural pathways using business process first. So the way we now work with IT is when we need to modify the applications um, or we need to build the member experience in mobile banking, we use those business processes to dialogue with our IT department which is a little bit backwards from how it's typically done. Right, absolutely, usually it's the, here's the technology yes. and, and they try to make it fit. And well, and actually our organization, when we started, a lot of people thought their business processes were the technology, so they really couldn't differentiate those two. Um, and by teasing out those business processes and helping them understand their requirements and their metrics and what they were actually doing through the members' eyes, they were able to reconfigure the software to better serve the members. So we often talk in theCUBE about this idea of microservices and you know, decomposing you know, services into reusable chunks and so it sort of sounds like SOA but it's sort of modern SOA. Can you do something similar with business process? Can oh, you, absolutely. And, and how, how do you, take us through an example of maybe how, how you've successfully done that. Well, it's interesting because again, like I said, we reinvented ourselves. So we gave our business users the path of choosing either their as is state, how they thought they did it, or how they wanted it to be when they first started mapping. And we didn't make it right or wrong. We let people, so if you're an underwriter and you have a process for underwriting alone, we let them just document what they're doing. And then we were able to parse all those pieces out until we had either sub-processes or connecting processes across the entire value stream of the organization. So we were able to, for, for the first time, understand from beginning to end, what do we mean when we say consumer lending? You apply for a car loan, what's the entire process all the way through to the end? If you apply for a mortgage, where does it start, where does it end? So each of those little micro uh, pieces as you're describing them um, are either activities within a process, a sub-process, a process, or part of an end-to-end -end value stream. Wow, so how do you visualize that, or do you have to visualize that in order to be successful? Yes, we actually started with a traditional model provided by APQC of how a financial organization should look. So we actually created, I call it the mall map. So we gave everybody zip codes and you are here. And we help people orient themselves inside the organization visually, and then we help them build, you know, field of dreams, build their processes to the model. And of course we had to modify that model multiple times. I think we went through 
14 iterations of that of map, but our organization now literally sees themselves through their business processes. It's really amazing. And a big part of your success is, like you said, you started with the business process and brought the technology in, but I mean, I've worked with organizations before, and a company like yours could have hundreds, if not more, applications in the portfolio and connecting to business processes and there are dependencies. So how do you, how do you tackle that without boiling the ocean? Do you have to break it yeah. down into manageable chunks? <coughs> That's a really great question, it? actually. A lot of people, a lot of people are, that's a question I get a lot. Yeah, bottom up or top down? Yeah, right? exactly. We actually started from the middle, oddly <laughs> enough, but um, we, during the, pro during the process of building all our business processes, we also went through a core conversion, a core operating conversion. So we had the opportunity, if you can imagine, yeah. to sort of model ourselves the way we thought it should be for I our members. I love how you call that an opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> you are an optimist. No, I'm a workaholic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, same difference. Um, anyway, we were able to then, as we were migrating to our new core operating system, rather than just accepting the out-of-the-box solution, our business owners, process owners, were able to actually work with the analysts from the applications to get those applications working the way they wanted them to. Now, we're not perfect, and of course, we have all the same you know, hiccups and itches that most organizations do. But it, this truly was fundamental in our um, win of the Baldrige Award. Carl, how about data quality? When you talk about the Baldrige Award, you talk about quality of information, people talk about the single version of the truth. How do you deal with all that? Yeah, that's a great question too. We are actually embarking on sort of reinventing ourselves through data because we're doing a lot of it uh, through dashboards right now, but we do not have a data solution. So we are aggregating data through from our multiple sources, applications, and we've built uh, enterprise dashboards that, you know, for our senior leadership team, blink, you know, red, yellow, yeah, or yeah, green, yeah, yeah. which allows us to go back into those processes and do some root cause analysis to figure out what we're doing. However, data is our next big thing. We do not have it uh, aggregated and with one single source, which is what we want to do. Do you have a chief data officer? We is do that, not yet have a, a chief role data that officer. You're we are actually considering? considering that. Yes, we are. I mean, a lot of folks in certainly healthcare, government, financial services are, are leading yes. in that direction. And there's a big debate. Should, isn't the CIO the chief data officer? Or a, this is amazing or that you're Doesn't asking the CIO this question. Have enough to do already. Yeah. <laughs> Right? He or she's got to keep the lights on. Yeah. How can they also deal with yeah. data quality? Where's security fit into this whole thing? No, Those are tough questions. They're, yeah. they're spot on. I mean, they're so, your question is so raw with what's happening right now, right now at my organization. Um, it's ironic. We actually have what we call the business intelligence team. They're short for Byte is their short name. And it's an uh, aggregation of analysts within the organization representing different, you know, the voice of the member or um, the voice of the process. And we're finding that in order to start aggregating data and actually thinking about a strategy with data, we probably are going to need a data czar. <laughs> we're mm -hmm. probably going to need a single voice, a single source uh, with the Byte team we'll work with. So if we're tackling it right now. And, and Presumably that data czar does not report into the CIO because that would cause maybe some other dependencies or conflicts. No, that, it's a, that's a right. really interesting. With it. <laughs> Oddly enough, it may end up in performance excellence because our group is truly the only agnostic provider of governance um, over all of our methodologies. And so our thinking is probably that the methodology itself needs to be agnostic from the business users and from IT. It's a new emerging role, and we think it has mm -hmm. legs, actually. Yeah. Data's not going away. No. And, and the <laughs> IT organization is not going to attack this issue of governance and, they don't. and data quality. They don't it's want really, to. They've got too much to do, right. right? They don't want to. What about Edge? We're here, IBM. What are you doing with IBM? What am I doing with IBM? Yeah, what's, well, uh, or what's IBM doing for you? Well, IBM has been an amazing partner for really? us from the beginning, and it's all interesting because our core operating systems are actually uh, related to the credit union itself. <clears throat> but we use IBM's BlueWorks Live to do all of this modeling uh, that we just talked about and described, and they've actually been tracking our story from the beginning, which has been made us very powerful in learning, having cycles of learning about ourselves and retelling our story. So they've invited us to multiple conferences, white papers, uh, interviews. It's been it's it's really been a great partnership. So you rely on BlueWorks Live to, Absolutely. to develop these maps that we it's were talking about. It's a noun about. and a verb in our organization. Is that, uh, did <laughs> it you is Blue how Works we do it, BlueWorks. It is how you, we do business. You, 
Okay, you, you blue works it. Yep, that, we, it, we it got blue put works. it in blue works. We're gonna have a talk <laughs> over blue works. Let's go put, let's log on to blue works. So. Okay, so that's the technology underpinning. And then of course there's people in process around that. How do those all come together? Well, actually BlueWorks is a modeling tool, mm -hmm. so all, it, what it allows us to do is see all of our processes visually and model them, make modifications to them. We're very agile in that if a process isn't performing, the blinky lights aren't going the way they should, we can go right back into that process and remodel it. All of, we have over 350 processes captured now and they all are interconnected. All the processes have inputs and outputs to another process within the organization. So BlueWorks, because it's cloud Base. It's super agile for stakeholders to get together. My outputs are your inputs. We can get together and talk about the impact of a process um, that I might be making on your process. So, the, the, that, so you, you understand the interdependencies between business processes and that con collect, uh, connects to the application portfolio as well? It does. And, and, and you achieve... Not, not uh, technically. No, but, 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 but conceptually. Yes, exactly. So you can identify, if you make a change, if you retire an application, you yes. can understand the business processes Absolutely. that are going to get affected by that. And we actually use a system swimming when we're modeling so that when we're making modifications to the application, we can go down to that system swim lane, we understand what the requirements are, what it is that that system's currently doing and serving that process, so we have those requirements available when we need to make changes to the and, application. And the governance of that change goes through your organization? Yes, it does. Okay, yes, so it it's does. not the line of business saying it, it's not the IT people saying we're going to do it, well, I mean, actually, they're driving it, but. Well, actually, it's interesting, the governance is over the methodology itself, so we have trained them how to validate and stabilize their own process processes using their stakeholders' input. And so what we're governing is what we ultimately have as a source of truth for all of this information where if it's going to get published, it had to have followed the methodology, which means you were engaged in the change. So it's a protocol. Yeah, essentially, exactly. that, that to the extent that's followed is going to fit into your model. How do you ensure and verify that it's 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 in compliance? Well, it's interesting. <clears throat> we thought we were going to be more like the cops, <laughs> running around trying to write tickets for people, <laughs> but it became self-governing because you're my stakeholder, and our processes are already tied, and we're linked to each other. They, people started governing each other, so if they saw things get uh, changed or a desk level procedure or a form or a letter, something changing related to that process, they would bring it to the attention of the process owner, and we really don't have any issues around that, believe so, it or not. No, I do believe it. I mean, from what you've described, you're having great success with minimal friction, but it scales organically. That's yes. the beauty of what you've done. Yes, we actually uh, employed what we called the special forces, which were a group of super users, early adopters in the beginning who got it, and we essentially licensed them to help us build process. You know, you say believe it or not, but actually, very few organizations are in this position. You really, congratulations Thank on you. being able to, to achieve that. So Thank what, you. So what's next? I mean, it sounds like you're done, but I'm guessing you're never done. No, we're not <laughs> actually done. It's crazy, we've only been, we just got this award a month ago, and so our senior leaders and our board of directors are currently really strategizing right now at our springboard planning conference about what will be next. I know data is on our horizon, and our focus now, even if we were to pursue the Malcolm Baldrige Award again, which uh, very few organizations have done or uh, won. <laughs> um, our focus will be on our members this time. We truly want to be as member-centric as we can, and in our business, in our organization, members are our customers. We're member-owned, so we really want to put our lens on our members. Yeah, and of course, you were talking earlier about the flexibility and the cloud-based services, and in your business, you know, things change so frequently, we, uh, compliance, it's so strict, you, you have to have that ability to it's change been, very quickly. We're, we are under siege, it is amazing, with mobile banking and Apple Pay and all the, all the players who are entering into banking, and yet we're still held to the same standards, regulatory standards that we've always been held to. Right, right, others are coming, hey, come on in, yeah. big play win. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's great. Yeah. Carla, wonderful story. Thanks so much for coming on theCUBE and Thank sharing you. it with us. And uh, hopefully we'll see you down the road at another IBM conference. Sounds great. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest right after this. This is Dave Vellante, we're live from IBM Edge. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back. <laughs>